Good evening, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are here in the Platt Craft Studio. I'm Chris Williams, and I have got a fabulous project for you this evening. Welcome to those of you that have tuned in on our Plaid Crafts Facebook page, and also welcome to those of you who have tuned in to our Plaid Crafts YouTube page. Here in the studio with me today is Caitlin. Let's all say hello to Caitlin. Hello, hello. Caitlin Smith is here, and she is going to do her best to help moderate for this evening. And uh, she's going to jump right in there if there's any questions. So in the chat column, feel free to ask any questions, and either Caitlin will do her best to answer them or pass them on to me. Welcome, everyone. We are going to have a great time tonight. We are going to paint giggles and grins. I'm sure you have seen this advertised both on the Plaid Crafts page, the Let's Paint page, and then maybe even my personal page on Facebook. I want to share with you that this little character here, our vintage Halloween cat, that's giggles. This is grins. So we, tonight we're going to paint giggles and grins. So let's just jump right into it. Let's go overhead, Caitlin. And uh, if there's any questions, just let me know. All right, Caitlin? All righty. Okay, so I hope all of you are ready to paint giggles and grins with me this evening. We're going to move along at a pretty quick pace because we have a lot to cover. You know me, I always like to add lots of detail and lots of extras. And we only have just about an hour to get going, so we are going to just go right into it. Um, this is an 8x10 canvas panel that I am painting on tonight, but any 8x10 canvas uh, or 8x10 surface would work for our class tonight. Tonight I'm also going to be painting on a canvas panel, and let me just share with you what I did with my panel. So that I can have my hands free without like getting my hands holding on to the edges of my canvas, I used blue painter's tape and I just made great big tape loops and I taped one across the top here on the back side of the canvas and I taped one down here at the bottom and then I adhered this canvas panel onto a piece of crescent illustration board. This is going to be my hands free so that when we get to base coating our, or painting our background here, I don't have to worry about getting my hands um, messy or my hands wet and wet paint. So that's what I'm working with here tonight. Um, there was a pattern and a supply list available for you. What I did was trace and transfer um, the pattern um, on my surface. And to tell you what I did was I began with my tracing paper. Once I downloaded and printed out the free download pattern, I then applied it to the tracing paper using a fine point black marker here. And then to transfer that onto my surface, and let me raise this up so you can see the details, I transferred just kind of the basic pattern lines on my canvas here and I did that using artist uh, graphite paper and a stylus or you can use a dead ballpoint pen too. So I simply put my tracing paper on top of my surface. You can kind of see through the tracing paper. I lined up my edges to the size of my canvas. And then once I had that in place, I kind of held my hand here and I lifted it up I placed the business side of my graphite paper down against the canvas itself, laid my pattern back over, and then I used a stylus to just simply trace over the basic pattern lines. And you don't have to worry about applying a lot of pressure, just simply just trace over these design lines. Once you do that, you can even kind of check along the way to make sure you've got your pattern transferred. But once it's transferred, all you have to do is just Kind of pick up your tracing paper and your graphite and set it aside. I'm also going to set aside my stylus. I'll keep that over here on this end. I'm working on a wax paper palette tonight, and I'm going to work with the Folk Art Multi-Surface Paints. However, you can also work with the Folk Art Matte Acrylics. So whichever's easiest um, and best for you, or what you might have on hand, you can even do a mixture of both of them. That will work as well. Let's start getting some colors out onto the palette, and we're going to get some basic uh, colors laid out on our pattern and our design here. What I put out right first of all is our pure orange. And I'm also gonna get out a bright yellow. Um, it, you can use a daffodil yellow, which is what I was on the supply list. You can also use a moon yellow. And we're gonna get just those two colors out to begin with. I'm going to start with working, um, let's see. 
I think I'm going to use um, either a number 10 flat or a number 12 flat. You could even drop down to an 8 if that's more comfortable for you. Um, and what we're going to do is, let, I'm going to do with the smaller brush first. I'm going to drop down to a number 8 first. What I want to do is fill in some of the bright colors where we have some yellow. I'm going to fill the flat of my brush with, and I'm using moon yellow tonight, but you could also, like I said, use daffodil yellow. I'm going to just simply paint in the shape of the interior of our little friend here, Giggles, the ears. So we're going to paint in the inside or the interior of the ears with our yellow. And again, I said I'm using the moon yellow. Uh, any bright yellow would work. And use the flat brush, and I just kind of painted it in, very simple. While we still have this yellow in the brush, let's paint the shape of the eyes. There's a, the actual inside of our vintage kitty cat here is going to be a black, but let's paint the yellow section, kind of like maybe an upside down horseshoe design here, kind of a rainbow shape that goes up and over around the black of our eye. We're going to do both eyes. And uh, then we're also going to look at the interior of the mouth. That is all 100% our yellow. Now the mouth has a little lip area around it too, so let's just kind of avoid that right now and just fill in the yellow of the mouth. And it's pretty close in size on both sides. This side I think is a little bit bigger, but I don't think it's really going to matter. This is a vintage style cat. It's not a realistic cat, obviously. So we're just going to paint in. Now, if you're painting along with us tonight, be sure and let us know. If you are just watching and would rather paint on the replay, please know that this pro uh, video tonight, this project is being recorded and you can find the replay on either Plaid Crafts Facebook page and or on um, Plaid Crafts YouTube channel. So now that we've got the yellow based in on our cat area, let's look down at our little pumpkin here, our grins, and let's go ahead and paint in the yellow around the eyes. Now on this pumpkin, he's a kind of has that same vintage feel. I did not worry about whether the eyes were exactly the si same in uh, shape or dimension. So if one eye gets a little out of hand, one eye is a little bit bigger than the other, I think that's really going to be kind of the fun of your project tonight. So this is a perfect kind of class for people of all ages and all skill levels because it does not have to be precise. So what I did was I painted in the two exterior oval shapes here on our eyes and then I did the horizontal oval shape of our little button nose. And then as you can see here, our mouth is also going to be painted in with that yellow. So let's get that covered in as well. Any questions yet, Caitlin? It does not look like it. Okay. Well, and while you're uh, watching and or painting along with me, be sure and let us know from where you're watching too. It's always a, a joy for us to know how many people are, are in the audience, how many people are following along and how many people um, are enjoying this and where they're tuning in from. I'm just neatly and carefully kind of covering in the mouth area here of our little friend. Now I did not trace and transfer each little tooth mark here on our kitty cat or the pumpkin because we can easily do that afterwards. If you did yours, you might still be able to see that pattern through the yellow because maybe our yellow doesn't have a tremendous amount of hide. And that'll be great if you do see that. All right, we've got all the yellow areas based in, but before we leave the yellow areas, I'd like to go ahead and give them just a little bit of shading. And I'm going to keep this brush. It's still loaded with my yellow. I didn't clean my brush out. I didn't wipe out any of the excess yellow. I'm going to now take this and I'm going to side load a corner or a, uh, one edge of this yellow filled brush into our pure orange. So I'm going to have a brush that has mostly yellow in it with just a little bit of the pure orange. I'll bring that up so you can see where I kind of side loaded into my puddle of my orange. And again, I'm working with pure orange. 
and then I came here and I just kind of blended it on the palette to make sure that I had a nice smooth gradation of color between the yellow and the orange. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to pick my piece up so that I can bring it a little bit closer to me. Boy, that looks funny right now just looking at the monitor with just the yellow on there. <laughs> We're going to start giving some character to the interior of the ears. So when we look at the ears here, the ears have a little bit darker shading, a little bit more orange uh, blush, if you will, on the bottom section of each of the ears. And I'll bring this up so you can see it closer. The top part of the interior ear, the top part of the yellow section, is going to be more yellow and less orange. So the side of my brush that has the pure orange blended in it, I'm going to just kind of pat that color on along that edge and then kind of pat some of it over towards the other half of the ear. Does that make sense? So it's kind of like more orange on the bottom side of the ear and it's more yellow on the top side of the ear. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing with this side so I'm turning the, the work, I'm turning the work and turning the brush so that it's easy for me. And you can see I'm just kind of pat, pat, patting that orange to the outside edge. And then I continue patting as I start moving towards the other side. And it just gradually makes that beautiful gradation of color between the two. For the eyes, we're going to use that same technique. I want to keep my orange on just a corner of my brush. And this time with our eyes that are yellow that are kind of like horseshoes or rainbows, we're going to start at the top of the rainbow shape or the top of the eye. And I'm just going to pat that little bit of orange down the side of the eye. And we're going to do it all the way around on that each eye. So I am almost kind of making an orange, we've been saying horseshoe or rainbow. We're doing that on both sides of that eye that's currently just yellow. Okay, so I'll do the same thing and I'm just starting at the top and kind of patting along, <coughs> excuse me, that edge, still keeping some of the yellow in the eye that we painted in already. And your yellow may not be completely dry yet. If it is just slightly wet, that's beautiful because then the colors will kind of blend well together. Mine is still a little bit wet. Now we're going to skip this mouth because our mouth here, let me bring this up and you can see our mouth doesn't really have any orange shading uh, in the yellow of his teeth. So we'll skip down now to our little pumpkin friend here onto uh, grins. And the eyes have the orange to the outside of the oval. So again, keeping my brush loaded with the moon yellow and a touch of my pure orange, I'm just simply going to pat that pure orange on the outside of that eye. So at this point I can turn my work upside down and continue patting towards me for the other half of the eye. Or if it's easier for you to just keep your work all right side up to you, I could start here on the left and I'm patting down to the bottom. And then I could re remember to flip my brush over because I do want to keep that orange to the outside edge and then I can pat down this way. So you can either turn your work or flip your brush. But I want to have orange on the outside edges of these yellow eyes. I'm going to put just a tiny little bit of my pure orange onto the nose. And I'm only doing, if you think about parentheses, think about uh, starting at the top and almost like a C. You're painting a C or the left side of a parentheses. And then I'm going to flip that brush around again so that I keep the orange to the outside and I'm making the other half of the parentheses. So I'm just kind of putting orange on both sides. I'm not going to go all the way around the whole horizontal oval of his nose. And when we look at grins, that would be our pumpkin here. When we look at his teeth, there is just a little bit of orange there shadowing this mouth or this section of teeth. So I'm going to, again, hold my brush so that I'm still loading a corner of it with my uh, pure orange. And this I'm just going to be very rough about. I'm not going to worry too much about making it exact or perfect. I'm putting some of the orange on and I'm just kind of scooting that brush around. 
Mostly the orange is towards the outside of the mouth, not so much in the center, but it's just very roughly done. I want it to be a little bit more hit or miss on this section, okay? So that's pretty much all of the yellow and orange that I want to do right now. So I'm going to go ahead and rinse that brush that I was working with. And let's get a couple more colors out onto our palette. Let's go ahead and get out our lime green. Lime green is a gorgeous, brilliant, bright, yellowy green color. We're also going to get out some aqua. And let's see what else. Uh, let's go ahead and get our purple color out. That's lavender. Kind of a rainbow of colors right now. All right, so let's go ahead with that same brush, which is now clean, and I kind of blotted it out onto my paper towel. Let's start first with our green. This bright yellowy green color, lime green, is what I'm going to use next to paint in the triangle of our kitty cat's nose. So I'm just going to use that chisel edge of my brush to kind of make a line across the top of the nose and then make that uh, inverted V, if you will, to kind of create the balance of the shape of the, uh, that triangle there. And then what we'll do is we'll just kind of fill it in. It's always a good idea, if you, by chance, if we have any beginners out in the audience today, in the classroom today, Learn your brushes, learn how to use the chisel edge of the brush, learn how to use the corner or the flat of the brush. Each brush has got special specialty uses or each section of the brush has a specialty use. Be sure and learn how to use those. I love to work with the chisel edge of my brush quite often. Now you can see as I was talking, I moved up to the green stripe of our hat. And that's not the type top stri uh, stripe. It's one section down from the top of the hat. So I'm again, I'm using that chisel edge of my brush and I'm just kind of making the shape that I want and then I want to fill that in. So there we are there. I'm going to let that dry. This time I'm not going to completely wash my brush, but I am going to wipe the green out. And now let's go ahead and work with our aqua. Because the green was fairly close as a color family and same almost hue or val uh, value or tone, I should say, of color, we didn't have to really clean the green out. With the aqua, I'm now going to paint in this section right here, which is the, the trim or the brim of his hat. Again, I'm going to use my chisel edge, just kind of giving myself my pattern line. And now I'm just going to paint that in as well. I'd love to know, did anyone make any comments, Caitlin, if they're painting along with us tonight? Um, there are people painting along, and one person actually said that they're putting this cat near the cat from last year. Oh, yes, yes, we did a vintage cat last year. That's a great idea. <laughs> Yeah, this, I think painting this style of a cat, and I say vintage, so for the, anyone that does not know, this style of cat, where kind of uh, very whimsical um, and very, uh, what do I want to say, exaggerated features, is very, very vintage style. Pro it was very, very popular from the 1920s through the 1940s. Uh, maybe even up into the 50s, but this is becoming very, very popular again all over. And so it's really kind of fun to see this style cat kind of come back again. I'm just kind of making sure my pattern is, is even on both sides here for this is aqua that I painted up here. Aqua is also these little diamond insets that's going to be on the ruffled collar. So while we have aqua in our hand, let's go ahead and paint those in as well. Again, use your chisel edge of the brush to kind of help you with the pattern of the shape. And this can be painted in very roughly. So this again is our aqua. I did not change the size of my brush. Yeah, I want you to paint to your comfort level. So if this is too large of a brush to paint this little um, diamond shape here, then swap down to a smaller brush. I learned was I was taught and I learned how to use a large brush for a small area whether you're using the chisel edges or you're using corners of the brush and you can get 
by with painting a lot quicker and in less steps when you're able to learn how to use a larger size brush. So if you can, when you're painting, try and train yourself to do the same thing. I think you'll find it much, much easier to paint. All right, now I've got my aqua in and I'm going to go ahead and clean my brush this time because I don't want any aqua in our purple. And what I'm going to do is blot that brush really well so that it's dry. I'm going to now use that same brush and load it with our lavender color. And let's real quickly paint in our little scallops here of our neckline, little ruffled collar, right up around the head and then painting around these little aqua um, diamonds that we painted. Now, if you are afraid of getting purple into the aqua, take a moment and use a hairdryer. That might be a little bit more comfortable for you to get that color kind of locked or set in place. So if you want to dry your aqua first, and like I'm doing, I always turn my work. I want to make it easier for me, whatever direction I'm stroking, whether I'm pulling towards me or pulling to the side, you want that to be an easy thing for you. So turn your work, flip your brushes around, make it easy. I love that idea that someone's going to decorate theirs right next to the vintage Halloween cat that we did last year. Yeah, that sounds adorable. <laughs> well, for those people that won't, don't know what we're talking about, um, if you're not yet a member, I'd love to invite you or welcome to have you join us. This is what we're talking about is the Let's Paint with Plaid Facebook group. That's one of Plaid's Facebook groups. And Andy Jones and I are the um, administrators of that group, and we teach all sorts of free learn to paint lessons. If you're following us and don't know yet know about it, please check us out on Facebook. Again, it's called Let's Paint with Plaid. And we teach every single Tuesday and Thursday a free lesson within that group at noon Eastern Standard Time. And one of the lessons that we taught last year, uh, I actually taught, it was another vintage style Halloween cat. And it was really super fun. I think that style of painting was new to many people within our group, but it was really fun and it was fun. It's always fun for us to see everyone's paintings. I've got my purple or my lavender on there. I'm now going to clean my brush. And one more thing I wanna paint on the kitty cat's face before we get into painting our black is I wanna do that lip line around there. So, we're going to add one more color to the palette, and that is Pueblo. Pueblo, uh, people, if you're not familiar with it, is a beautiful, almost like a burnt orange color. It's very deep in color, and it's um, burnt orange or maybe terracotta type color. It's beautiful. So we're gonna take, and I'm gonna use my liner brush because we're going much smaller in size, and I'm gonna add just a little bit of my pure orange to it. I want to, uh, make a combination. So it's kind of like that terracotta slash burnt orange, but we're going to rosy it up a little bit with the pure orange. And once I have that put together, I'm simply just going to paint that outline shape around the lips, if you will, around the nose. Uh, around the nose. Around the lips around the nose? I don't think so. <laughs> the lips around the smile line or the mouth. I know you all got to check a lot of that. I can't believe I said that. It's been a long day here at work. <laughs> and perhaps it's been a long day for some of you. So I hope you enjoyed that, that little chuckle. And we have quite a few people from all around. <laughs> oh, really? Yes. Great. We have Pennsylvania, Canada, New Jersey. Washington, Florida, North Carolina, Arizona, Minnesota, New Jersey. Oh, wow, I love it. Yes. I hope you take note of about how many. I'd love to know how many 
students we have in the classroom tonight. Are you looking at Facebook or YouTube or both? Both. Um, oh. As of now, it looks like there's 37 viewers on YouTube, and I'm not sure about Facebook because it doesn't tell me on the iPad, but oh. if there are any viewers that want to let me know, <laughs> we, would, <laughs> we would love to know. Thanks, Caitlin. Mm -hmm. It's so nice to know where everyone has, where everyone calls home and how they find us. So I appreciate each of you taking time tonight to kind of paint along with us. All right, one more color. I'm gonna keep moving pretty fast here tonight. Let's go ahead and get some black out onto our palette. The black I'm using is uh, licorice. If you don't have that, you can use some pure black. Let's go ahead and paint in the shape around our inset of our ears, so the outer part of the ears. And then basically we're gonna paint like the whole like circle head of our kitty cat, obviously, minus the yellow areas and the green nose and the lips that we've already painted, okay? Now, if you have transferred this stroke here, like creating the bridge of the nose up over the eyes, which I did on mine, because I wanted to show that to you, if you have painted or transferred that line, don't worry about it. You can either leave yourself a tiny little cheat line if you wanna know where that little uh, bridge of the nose and eyebrow stroke is going to be afterwards. Leave yourself a little cheat line and or feel free to paint the whole thing black and I'll teach you how to do that part here when we get to it. So I'm gonna start with that, um, <clears throat> let's see, this is my number eight flat brush first. And I'm going to fill that brush with my black, both sides of the brush. And let's start up at the top of the hat. So when we look at our kitty cat's hat, the very, very tip underneath the pom-pom is that last little triangle at the top there is our black. So if you want to even paint over a little bit of that pom-pom to kind of create that point on the hat, that's perfectly fine. Again, remember, just always use the chisel edge of your brush to kind of give you those nice straight lines. And you can make light work very quickly when you use your flat brush. The next stripe down, so that would be the stripe here between our lime green and our aqua is also going to be our black. So let's make another black stripe here. And you can see I'm just kind of using that chisel edge to the best of my ability trying to mark in the shape of the lines there. We have an update. It's about 26 on Facebook. Oh, wonderful. Thank you all for tuning in. And also that vintage cat, do you know if it's still on our Plaid Crafts page or should I just recommend the website? It's not on our Plaid Crafts page. It's on the Let's Paint with Plaid. Let's Paint with Plaid. Facebook page. Okay. And I think we called it Vintage Halloween Cat. And if you are uh, just joining that group, we have all of the patterns in a section called Files. And then also we have the actual video lesson in a section called Guides. And it would be Guides of last year. So it would be 2022 Guides. But if you just go look for the Files section, if you scroll down into, it would be October-ish. <laughs> maybe September, October of last year, is when we taught the Vintage Halloween Cat, and that would be the name that you'll be searching for, too. Okay, thank and you. And welcome to our group, if you're gonna be joining us. <laughs> All right, now let's go ahead and start working on the outside edge of our ears. And I'm just gonna, again, use, I sound like a broken record, I'm using that chisel edge of my brush to kind of very neatly paint around that orange and yellow inset turning my work as I see I need to. And we have one little outside of the ear painted and we'll do the same thing for the other side. And I'm using light pressure when I do this. And remember too that everyone's canvas or everyone's surface is gonna be slightly different. So if by chance you have a canvas that is a little bit more textured than others, make sure that you are making every little stroke count and that you are filling in the, in, the little weaves, uh, little, the groove or the weave of the canvas. All right, I'm kind of looking good here. Now let's just go ahead and work on the rest of the cat's hat. 
or head, not hat, the hat's done for now. Using that chisel edge, I'm kind of making a nice shape around the outside of the head. And I am just going to go slow and carefully along the collar line here, or where our ruffled collar is. I'm bringing my piece around, up around on the other side where the, the other half of the head is, or the cheek area, going up to the ear. And then I'll go across the top of the ear, or the bottom of the ears here, the top of the head is what I was starting to say. And the bottom of the hat, or across the forehead area. And across the other ear here at the base of the ear. All right, so now when you get ready to fill it in, you're gonna go right up next to the other features. So like right up next to the eye and then paint in between. And you'll follow around the mouth, follow around the other eye, just take your time. Basically all you wanna do right now is just fill in the shape of the face, the head, minus the facial features with our black. And I, again, I'm just using my chisel edge. I'm very careful as I go around, <coughs> excuse me, the lips here and the mouth. And I'm just filling in around. And again, around the other half, the other corner of the mouth the corner of the smile there. I'm going to skip up and do the top of the eye here, working kind of like on the exterior of the face, going around in a circle. And as I come up here, I'll paint uh, one side where you can see a cheat line for the bridge of the nose, and one I'll just paint over. So this side I'll paint over. So as you're coming around and you're looking at this side that I'm where I'm working right now, I've painted over that line of the bridge of the nose. For this, uh, for the right side of our kitty cat's face, I'll show you how to do a little cheat line if you're not familiar with what I say when I say a little cheat line. I'm going to paint up around that eye. Oh. And Christine Thorne said that the vintage cat was October 26, 2022. So well, thank gosh. you. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. I couldn't remember the date offhand. I was kind of taken by surprise. I knew it was September or October. So thank you, Christine. Mm -hmm. We appreciate that little uh, tidbit and the update, I should say, of information. And speaking of updates, would you like an update on time? Sure. It is 8.04. Okay. Thank I think we're doing pretty good. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, the, giving me a time update is great because <laughs> I know we're only supposed to be about an hour, but it, it never really is when you're painting with me because I've got a lot to share. But we all love it. Well, thank you. All right, let me just share with you, um, if you look at the bridge of the nose, my left side here, I just painted over that pattern line. This side, I gave myself a little cheat line. And what I did, if you're not familiar with what that term kind of means, is I went up real close to that pattern line on both sides of the pattern line, but I left a little void space there in the middle. So that kind of gives me an idea of where the bridge of the nose, uh, that white stroke that we're going to paint in where that goes. So I want you to do it whichever way is best or easiest for you. Create yourself that little cheat line or I'll show you how we can paint that right on top afterwards. I'm almost done with all of the black of my little kitty cat here. If for some reason, because of our time restraints tonight, you find that this is moving a little bit faster than what you normally like to paint, absolutely no worries paint to whatever you can do tonight um, like we said earlier in the 
evening. This class is being recorded and you'll be able to see the replay and paint along with the replay. Just paint to your heart's content and do the best you can to keep up now. All right, when we look at our kitty cat here, the little triangles inside our yellow slash orange that we started on our eyes, they're also painted black if you see it over here. So while I still have the black in my brush and I still have that beautiful chisel edge, I'm going to go ahead and slice in these little uh, insets to the eyes, the pupil of the eye and we're going to paint that in and now it really doesn't look as funny it's really starting to come to life when you see these facial features and the tremendous contrast that there is between the yellow that bright bright yellow and the orange and now of course the stark contrast of our blacks it's really kind of fun and our kitty cat's starting to really come to life all right so now what we want to do is clean the black out of our brush real quickly and I am going to pick up a larger brush. What I, had, what I was working with was uh, a number eight flat. Let's go ahead and work with our number 12 flat. And we're gonna start working on the body or the fleshy parts of our little friend grins here, of our pumpkin. And I am going to load my brush with our pure orange. And then I'm also going to pick up a corner load of our a terracotta like color which is called Pueblo and that's what I'm going to use is a combination of a brush that's got pure orange and Pueblo in the flat of the brush. The side of the brush that's containing our darker color our Pueblo is what I'm going to put on each of the sections where one section kind of goes behind the other. So if I'm starting on this outside section here the Pueblo side of my brush is going to be right up along this line right here, if that makes sense. So I'm just going to take that brush with the Pueblo side next to my pattern line, and I'm just kind of using short little choppy strokes, kind of patting that color on. Reload your brush as you need to. We're going to go all the way up here at the top and kind of bringing that color down. And I'm going to also keep it right up here underneath the purple or the lavender colored collar. And I'm just going to pat that on and bring some of that color down a little bit. And then I'm going to wipe my brush just a tiny bit. And I'm going to bring the rest of the color out to the outside edge of the shape here. And I'm going to add a little bit more pure orange. If you by find yourself going outside of your pattern line, remember we haven't painted the outside of our design yet, so you can clean those up when we're all said and done. We're going to do this with a very um, scant amount of paint. When you look at my little finish guy here, he's very blotchy, he's very vintage, he's very kind of time-worn look, and that's what we want. So when you paint him, if you are stroking several little strokes, I don't want to see a lot of choppy little brush marks, but if you see where there's an area where there's maybe a little bit more paint, that's perfect. It's okay. Don't fret over this because we do want him to look vintage. So let's do the same thing again, working one more section, working a section at a time. I'm going to start with the Pueblo side of my brush up here at the top. I'm going to bring a little bit more in. And then I'm going to bring that along that pattern line and we will go around this oval eye here that is uh, halfway through maybe where that shape is, the section line. And I'm going to use short choppy strokes coming down again. And then what I'm going to do underneath the smile, I'm going to come up with the Pueblo close to my yellow of the smile. And then we're going to bring that down here. So I've got mostly Pueblo, if we're looking at this section, it's mostly on the left side of this. We went around the eye, we kind of came down. We can put a little bit across the top of the mouth and over to the side here. And then we went underneath the mouth and then down this side here. Then what I'm going to do is I'm again going to wipe a little bit off of my brush. I don't want to really want to clean the full brush but I want to have a little bit less paint in the brush 
and I'm now going to fill in with the pure orange the rest of this section. So I don't want to see that white of the canvas showing through. And like I said, it's okay for it to be just a little bit splotchy. Don't try and do a full undercoat of orange first and then come back and shade on top because we want it to look very vintage, very old looking. So if you look at my second section and my first section, you can see it's kind of splotchy here and there. And that's what I want for this particular project. Let's fill our brush one more time with our pure orange side load into the Pueblo and let's scoot over to this side and work our way towards the center one. So we'll, we've got two on the outside here on the right. We've got two sections here on the left and then we'll do our center one. So we're going to do exactly the same thing, my friends. We're going to start here with the Pueblo at the bottom of the section, keeping the Pueblo side of the brush, which, which is our shading color towards our section lines, patting that color on, working up towards the uh, collar here, the ruffled collar that is going to be our lavender color. And then coming up underneath that lavender collar and around that edge. So now we have the Pueblo pretty much on there. I'm going to wipe my brush to remove some of that darker color, pick up just my pure orange. Again, I can kind of use the chisel edge of my brush to kind of get the shape of the section of the pumpkin that we want here. And this is done really quickly when you kind of get the hang of it. Like I said, we're not working for or perfection. We're just trying to get some color on and I probably the splotchier it looks, you know, as far as color application, I like. I don't want to see a lot of little choppy, 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 choppy brush marks. Let me see if you can see what I just did. Can you see the little stop and starts marks? I don't want to see a lot of that, but I want to see a lot of intermix of maybe not evenly applied paint, if that makes sense. So I'm loading again with my pure orange, side loading with my Pueblo, and I'm going to turn my little work either upside down or turn my brush the other way around. So we're going to put our Pueblo along the um, little scalloped collar there. And then we're going to bring the section up here to that area. Get a little bit more pure orange in my brush. I've got the Pueblo side of my brush going around the eye just like we did on the other half of the face. I've got Pueblo coming around the corner of the mouth here, at the bottom of the mouth, all the way up to the side. And then we're going to bring a little bit of Pueblo where this section at the bottom kind of meets the center section. So we've got a lot of Pueblo down there. Let's wipe that Pueblo out of the brush. <clears throat> Excuse me, pick up a more of our pure orange. Using the chisel edge of the brush, I'm going right up next to the other section. And because the pure orange is a lighter value uh, than the Pueblo, there's no need to come back and highlight. We're just going to leave this be the pure orange. Now, should you choose to add a little highlight, you could grab a little bit of your moon yellow and add a little moon yellow in here while it's wet. But it really isn't that necessary because we're going for a vintage look. So I did put a little bit of moon yellow and blended it into the uh, orange sections there, but really it's not all that necessary. All right, now for the center, we're going to again start with our brush loaded with the pure orange, side load into our shading color, our Pueblo, and we are going to bring the Pueblo around the top here where the collar meets our little pumpkin face our little jack-o'-lantern. And then what we're going to do is also go around the eyes, keeping the Pueblo color next to the facial features, next to the eye, just kind of patting that on. <clears throat> I'm going to do the same thing on this side. So the Pueblo is next to the facial features. And around here at the bottom of the eye. We'll go around the nose. Again, the Pueblo will be closest to our 
our facial feature of the nose. Around this side here, I'm just patting that color on, getting it as close to it as I can. And remember, this is a vintage look. So if your nose is not 100% uh, perfect in shape of a horizontal oval, I, I think I'm going to like it that much better. <laughs> I'm not sure if I said October 22nd or the 26th for the vintage cat, but Christine says it's the 26th. Okay. Just to bring clarity. Oh, to okay. Some Did you I'm maybe not, said it, say it wrong? I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. know. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm glad Christine's out there and keeping us straight, right? Yes. <clears throat> Thank you for looking at that date and, and, and letting us know. The very, very bottom of our center section here, I've got the Pueblo side of my brush right up next to our mouth line. And now you can see I've got a lot of void, a lot of white space. So what I'm going to do is just simply wipe that darker color out of my brush, pick up with my um, just pure orange, and I'm just gonna pat, pat, pat that in on all of this section. And again, you can see as I'm patting this color on, let me bring it up so you can see, it's very, um, oh, textured is probably a good word. It's very hit or miss. It's very vintage. It has a good vintage feel. It does not have a perfection feel. You know, it's like old, it's worn, and it's maybe even, a, maybe splotchy is a good word to describe the color. It's not an even application of color. Usually I'm all about an even application and making it nice and smooth and pretty, but not on this particular night. We're going more for a very old fashioned look. So I think that's about all I want to get on my face here of my little friend. And so I'm going to clean my brush. Let's start working on some of the fun facial features here on our kitty cat. And I'm just cleaning that brush out and I'm going to go ahead and wipe that brush really well on my paper towel. And now what we're going to do is a lot of work using our liner brush. But before we do, if you want to give your cat a little bit of a cheek, I'm going to show you on my cat here up close. From a distance, you don't see the cheeks as much. So maybe you choose to leave your cheeks off. But look here between the corner of the mouth and underneath the eye. And on both sides, you're going to see a little blush of a very cheeky kind of cheek. <laughs> it's not blended well. It's almost kind of like another little rainbow shape. And what you'll do is use a combination of your pure orange on a flat brush and a little bit of your Pueblo. So it's this same color combination here that we use to kind of paint that lip around is what we're going to use to kind of paint that uh, arcing shape of a cheek. If you choose to put cheeks on, there's very little space really, but we're just going to start here. Um, and I only have that color on one half of the brush, remember. So it's on one half of my flat brush. This is a number 12 flat. I'm going to start here about, oh, maybe a quarter of the distance of the width of the mouth here. And I'm going to just kind of lightly brush that on. I'm, I'm patting that color, keeping the side of the brush that has the color in it towards the top of the head. The side that has no paint in it is down towards the mouth. And I just kind of pat it on a little bit of a cheek. I'm not worried about making brilliant rosy cheeks because, and usually I do, especially when I paint my Santas, I love to have rosy cheeks. But this cat vintage style, we don't necessarily need to make a big emphasis of this cheek. So it's just patting on a little bit of a rainbow shape uh, of a cheek. And again, that cheek color, if you're painting along, was a little bit of our pure orange and a little bit of our Pueblo. And now I'm going to clean that brush. And we are going to work with some wicker white. So I'm going to use my liner brush. But before that, I need to get some wicker white out onto our palette. And uh, for this line work, I do want the paint changed, in, the consistency of the paint changed. I want it to be more fluid. So I'm going to take some of the water here from my brush basin, 
pull it over to my little wax paper palette I am brushing out or pulling out some of our white. I want that paint to be more fluid or more juicy in consistency. And I want it to be able to flow from my paintbrush. So once I have a nice little puddle here, kind of mixed of my juicy fluid paint, I'm then going to take that brush and I am going to touch my paper towel. I like to remove that mixture out of my brush first, and then I come back and refill it. And I am actually kind of twisting that brush back up to the tip so I have a nice tip here on my liner brush. What we're going to do is let's start inside the ears first. And let me just show you when I'm going to tell you what we're going to do. We're going to start with three little strokes inside the ear. We're going to start with the larger stroke first. And it's not quite touching the tip, but when we first touch down, we're going to apply a little bit of pressure and then we're going to pull that stroke down to where it's the base of the ear and as we are pulling that stroke down in slightly like a comma stroke or kind of like a parenthesis if you will as we pull down we're releasing the pressure and removing the brush from the canvas so it gets from a wider point down to a skinny little point and i'm going to do three of those in a row on one's ear so i'm going to load my brush nice and full of that juicy paint and what I'm going to do so that you can see it here, I don't want you to see just the top of my hand. I'm going to tilt mine a little bit. I'm going to start here almost at the tip. I'm applying pressure. Then I'm going to start pulling it and bring it down to where it's a very skinny little line. All right. And then we're going to do the same thing again right next to it, but a little bit smaller in size and then another little bit smaller in size. So I'm going to bring a little bit more there. Then we're going to do the exact same thing on the opposite side. So we're going to, I want to make sure you can see, we're going to touch down, apply a little pressure, and then start pulling and lifting so that we end up with kind of like a little bit of a curve to this stroke. It's going to look almost like a little bit of a, um, what do I want to say, a parentheses, a comma stroke. And there, there's three of them right there in a row. And you're going to do the same thing on the other half. Now what we want to do with this same brush filled with our more juicy or fluid paint on the liner brush, I am going to go on the outside of our eyes and just paint a white line. So we're going to have a white line at the base of the eye, which is kind of almost a straight line across. Then we're going to do that uh, up and over the rainbow uh, design on both of the eyes. Okay, so we're going to go a line across the bottom and then up and over the rainbow or up and over the shape of the eye. So we're going to start here at the bottom. Make one line. And then we're going to go up and over. If it's easier for you to just maybe stop halfway Go ahead and stop halfway. Check the, your brush fill. Make sure you have enough paint in your brush. And then just retrace or backtrack a little bit and then carry that same stroke all the way down to the bottom. So we're going to go ahead and fill over that white of the eye. I'm going to do one more stroke across the bottom here. So now we basically have outlined the eye and I want you to repeat that same process on the other eye. So you're going to go ahead from the bottom of the eye, left to right, right to left, it doesn't matter. And you're going to then go up and over. So you can do it all in one movement or you can split it and do it in half, whichever is easier for you. Sometimes people find it easier to pull towards you rather than pulling away from you, or maybe perhaps it's easier for some people to go from left to right, right to left. Find your comfort zone and paint that line around the eye. Now we're going to add two little highlights in each eye. And when you look at my finished one here, I'll bring it up to the camera. Look at the eye and the upper um, highlight, that would be this one right up here, is larger than the highlight to the bottom. So this one has a little bit more pressure on it when we touch down on the surface. I'm just gonna touch down and then quick lift. So it's not really a circle, it's not a comma stroke, it's just a mush and lift. 
and this one has more pressure, which makes it bigger. This one down here is much smaller, and it's very, very much just a touch and go. We're not going to apply a lot of pressure. If you think about the face of a clock, your highlights in both eyes should be exactly the same. Think about maybe 1 o'clock and diagonally down from it, which would then be um, 7 o'clock. 1 o'clock and 7 o'clock. So on our eyes, let's go ahead and put our highlights in. 1 o'clock, it's a smush and go. And if you want to do both 1 o'clocks or both highlights at the top of the eye first, that because you get the feel of it, that's good. And then you can come back and do the one diagonally down from that, which is just a touch and go, just a touch and go. There's not a lot of detail in these. Remember, this is a vintage style, so we want this to be very old looking. And so we're not worrying about draw, uh, doing pupils and shading the eye and we're not doing any eyelashes and all of that sort of thing. It's just very, very simple. Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to create the bridge of this nose. So when you look at the nose, if you've left yourself the little cheat mark, you kind of know where you're going. If you haven't left yourself a cheat mark, you're going to start here on the upper corners of this triangle. So on the right side, you're right here at the corner of the triangle. You're going to start here and you're going to stroke up and over and around the top of the eye and stop about mid ear. So let's see that really close. So you're stopping, you're starting down here. So in other words, if you're pulling towards you, you're going to turn your work upside down. You're going to start here and you're going to pull along the bridge of the nose and then you're going to come around and stop about midway of the width of this ear. Then you'll turn around and do the same thing for the other side. So take it one step at a time. If you left yourself your cheat sheet here on this side, like I kind of did one example for you, all I'm going to do is I'm going to start here at the corner of that nose and I'm going to follow my cheat line. And I'm going to come up and over, go slow if you have to, and then I'm going to stop about midway of that ear. Now on the other side, if you painted like I did here and you don't have that cheat line, it's nothing any different. It's the same thing. You're going to start here on that corner of the nose, come all the way up, start arcing and curving over the eye, and then you're going to stop about halfway of the eye. All right? Now we're going to go ahead while we have the white in our brush and it's a nice fluid consistency paint but it still has a little bit of body to it. The top of the nose here has just a little decoration of some dot work. So let's look at that. It's just simply little dots of white paint and I'm talking about the ones here, not the whisker dots, but the top dots across the top of the nose here. We're just going to start here in whatever width of a nose you have, start here in the center and just touch down and make a dot. And then just fill dots out, however many you can fit. It might be two, it might be just one more. It depends upon how much space you have. Just kind of give yourself some dots as just extra decoration above that nose. Now we do have some whisker dots and we have some long whiskers, but we won't pull the whiskers out until after we finish our background because obviously the whiskers are going to be on top of our background. But while you have this brush loaded with your white, go ahead and give yourself uh, just a touch down lift. Oh, that was a big one. Well, I'm going to leave it because that'll just add to the uh, desire of our vintage look. Give yourself some dots that will be your whisker dots. All right. That looks funny with the big one, but I kind of like it. It's something different. All right, now I'm going to clean the white out of my brush. And what we want to do is we want to work on her mouth here or his mouth, and that's done with our licorice and our liner brush. So let's take a little bit of water over to our wax paper palette after I cleaned the white out of my brush. And let's thin down and make juicy a little bit of our black paint. Again, I'm using licorice. You could use pure black. Then once you have this to where you like it and you can do some nice line work, what we want to do is we want to paint 
basically outlining the shape of this yellow teeth area, the interior of his mouth. So we're going to go, if you almost kind of think of this as like a hot dog shape, we're going to do the outside around all of the yellow. So we're going to make that smile line at the bottom, curve on those corners of the mouth, and make the smile line at the top. So don't worry about the teeth marks right now. Just go ahead and outline the smile. So, and take your time. It doesn't, it's not a, uh, a rush. It doesn't have to be perfect. Use just the tip of your liner brush. Do a little bit if, if you can at a time and then stop if you need to. Don't feel like you have to do this all in one continuous motion. Work at your pace. Try and get this as smooth as you can. BJ yeah. says the cat has a pimple. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe mine does. <laughs> Now, if, if for some reason you did what I did and you decide you don't like that, by all means, you can take a wet brush and you can lightly go right up there next to it and you can kind of clean up some of that. I, it wasn't bothering me, but I'm just showing you this as an example. If you wanted to make that a smaller dot, just use the corner of your uh, flat brush that's wet and you can go right up there next to it and then, of course, you can remove it and then make another dot if you wanted to. But to me, I think it just kind of added some to the uh, look of the uh, old vintage cat. Yeah, it was like a Marilyn Monroe kitty. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I like that idea, Caitlin. <laughs> now let's go ahead and put some teeth marks in here. So what I did for my teeth marks, I just did a, a line right through the, the mouth area, making each individual tooth. I started here in the center. So if you think about the corner or the bottom point, of your triangle nose as being the center of his or her face, just draw a line right there and then continue to add teeth marks going out from there. If you want to be symmetrical about this, if you do one, two, three marks on going from the center outwards on the right, then you probably should do three marks going from the center mark going out to the left. But, you know, again, this is a vintage cat. If your spacing is a little different, maybe our, your kitty cat needs some braces. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go ahead and add our teeth marks. And it's just simply a little line. Your teeth can be as wide as you want or maybe as narrow. Think about if you're doing narrow teeth, then you have to do more lines. So just kind of keep that in mind. Uh, this type of artwork, this cat is very cheesy, I think, in its look. So we're just going to kind of go with that cheesy smile. All right, now, as I said, we've got whiskers coming, but we're going to wait on the whiskers. Let's move up to the hat real quick. And I'm going to drop down to a flat brush, and it's going to be a smaller flat brush. This is my number eight. And when we look at this bottom uh, rim or the first section here of our hat, the brim maybe is what I should say. That was painted in with our aqua, but I have some lavender stripes on mine. You can, if you want to, add stripes. You can add polka dots, whatever you like. I used the flat of the brush to kind of guesstimate the size of these stripes. And I started here in the center. So kind of think about going up the bridge of the nose and you're gonna make one lavender stroke there. So I'm going to show you again. Let me make it here. There we go. And so I put a lavender stripe. Let that be your center one. And then just kind of look at this and maybe put the distance of one more on here. If you use a smaller width brush, you can get more stripes on there. I think when I made my sample, I might have dropped down to maybe a four flat because there is a difference here between these two, how many stripes I was able to get across. And then what I'm going to do is just set this brush aside. We'll get our black liner brush filled again. And what I'm going to do is just do vertical lines of black between these stripes. So we're going to just right along the edge of both of these colors between the aqua and the lavender, we're just going to paint a black stripe just to kind of help define these two different areas. This is all done with the liner brush and that same black paint that was a little bit uh, 
juicy in consistency. We want that paint to kind of flow off the brush. All right, now our little um, green area up at the top here, I took my number four flat brush. It's clean and it's relatively dry. I'm gonna side load into our aqua and blend on the side here. I want just aqua in one half of that brush. And I'm going to keep the color side, the aqua side, to the outside shape of this whole design. So I'm going to just color in aqua on all sides of this shape here. Just to put a little color on that bright, bright green. And then I'm going to wipe my brush and I'm going to clean it. You can even, I think I'll remove a little bit in the center here just to kind of brighten up that green a little bit. So basically we shaded this green area with the aqua around all of the edges. And then what I did on my kitty cat here, because I put stripes on this color band, I put polka dots on this color band. So you can add some white polka dots. Use the um, bristles end of your liner brush. Use the handle end of your liner brush if you'd rather go back to using your stylist as a dotting tool. Use whatever dotting tool you want. I'll show you as a stylist. It makes great little dots. And I put one at the top and one at the bottom here, starting in the center. And then I dotted out from there and just kind of added a few more dots as kind of creating an overall pattern. So dots, white dots come next. Again, that's your liner brush, the bristle end and or the handle end, or use your stylus to kind of create those dots of color. All right, let's go down to our collar now. The collar was painted with our aqua uh, little diamonds and with the lavender in the uh, fabric of the ruffle here. I'm gonna add a little bit more of my lavender because I can see it's a little splotchy. This one I do want it to be a little bit better as far as opaque coverage. So I'm just kind of dancing that lavender brush around the shapes of the aqua diamonds here. And almost kind of filling that in. It looks, it's looking better with a second coat. And there we go. All right. Now, what I want to do is lighten the ruffle part or the curved, the scalloped edge a little bit. So I've got lavender mostly in my brush, but let me pick up a little bit of white on the corner of the flat brush. And I'm just going to scoot this around using just the corner of my brush, the white side towards the bottom, just lightening that ruffled edge a little bit. It's not going to be a huge difference, but just a little bit of white on those ruffles will make a big difference on the uh, scalloped edge and it will also kind of highlight it enough to where it separates it from the body of the pumpkin. Just kind of patting that white on. Again, I'm just using the corner of the brush. Get a little bit more here on this last one. All right. The aqua little diamond shapes are outlined with our white to create or to define the uh, diamond shape. And then there's a little tiny black dot here in the center. So let's go ahead and start with our white first. Again, it's my liner brush. I'm using that same little area where I thinned out some of the color and made it more fluid. <clears throat> and each little aqua diamond is outlined in white. So there's one. And these, again, if they can be a little more free form if you didn't transfer that shape or design. If you painted them in freehand, I think that's going to be just as charming. I hope you all are, those of you that are painting along with us tonight, are enjoying giggles and grins. 
Uh, we've talked about our Facebook group a couple different times and welcomed you to join it. What we do there is we ask everyone to take a picture of their finished work and share it in the group as a post. Uh, and you will find so many new friends within the group that are all going to say how much they love your work. <laughs> We're all there to be a cheerleader for each and every one. Let's go back to that dotting tool because that was quick and easy. And let's use the black. Uh, and again, mine is the licorice. And let's give the center of each of these little um, aqua diamond shapes a little black dot. If you want all your dots to be the same size and shape, if you are using a dotting tool, uh, the handle into your paintbrush or a dead ballpoint pen or your stylus, make sure you re-dot or reload for every single one if you want them all the same size. Now, this is all outlined in black, but we're going to wait until we get the outside done here. Let's scoot down to our little um, pumpkin here to, to grins, and let's use that liner brush. Let's fill it with that fluid black. We want our licorice to be um, very thin to where it will just simply flow off of the point of your brush. Now we're only going to do parts of the work here on the, this pumpkin and we'll finish up the balance once we get our ba a background done and that'll be the next step. But let's right now take a look at our pumpkin. We need to give her or him some black eyes. So you can do that with a small flat brush or you can do it with your liner brush because we're also going to do some line work. So I went ahead and just filled my liner brush and I'm painting in a smaller oval inside that yellow oval that we started with. And again, these could be the same size. Uh, and if they're not, if one eye ends up being a little bit larger than the other, I think that just lends itself to that vintage look that we're striving for tonight. So don't worry about it. And what we're going to do now is we're also going to do this line work around the outside of that yellow and orange part of the eye as well as our nose. So let's do that line work now using that liner brush filled with the thinned consistency licorice. And a tip here that might help you because you might not be able to do the full oval shape. Because these eyes fall on a uh, section of line of the pumpkin, there's a section line of the pumpkin, Start at the top of the section line and come around to the other section line. Do half of an eye, but use the section lines as your start and stop marks. That you'll find so much easier. So on this eye here, I'm starting at the top and I'm just going to paint half of that around to where I come down to where the other little stop and start mark is or where the other section of the line is going to be to create the different section of each part of the pumpkin. And that you'll find is so much easier to outline those eyes if you do it in two parts and you stop and start where those section lines are. There's your pro tip for you. Now unfortunately our nose is flat smack in the middle of our middle section of our pumpkin so you don't really have a start and stop line there, but I think because it's smaller in size, if you hold your brush straight up and down, those bristles will do their job and they'll be able to go around in, a, in an oval for you. So we've outlined the eyes, we've outlined the nose, we've painted the interior of the eyes black. Let's look at the mouth here on grins. And so the mouth is done kind of like we did up here. We outlined the mouth first. So let's outline the mouth first. So let's just take our liner brush. If you want to start again, thinking of starting where a segment line is, start on a segment line, go around the corner of the mouth, and maybe stop if you want to stop along the way. Stop at where the next segment line is. Does that make sense for you? So you're going to start and stop on segment lines if that helps you. Uh, let's see. Let me just go do it this direction. So here's a segment line right here. So I'll take this and go over to the next one. 
this will help you kind of control the line work and be able to cover that area. Now on this one, we'll do the same thing again. We're going to start at along the top, go around the corner of the mouth, and come back down to where that other segment line is. And then, of course, we'll do the top of the smile line. There we go. Let me make this a little bit wider right here. There we go. Now, our teeth marks for this one are done exactly the same as our cat, in that we started here in the center and we did so many teeth going out to the right, so many teeth going out to the left. But when you look at this, here is just one level, like just a top set of the teeth. Here is the top and the bottom of the teeth. So right now, all we're going to be concerned with is just doing the vertical strokes around. So start here in the center, like in the middle of the nose down, and make one vertical pull and then pull out going on either side, just repeating what we did for our kitty cat. So I'm going to start here in the center, and I'm going to pull out. And again, you can make your teeth as wide as you want or as narrow as you want. They need to curve with the mouth as the mouth is starting to curve up to make that smile line. Let the vertical lines here kind of follow that. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I am pulling from the top of the smile line down to the bottom of the mouth. If it's easier for you to pull upwards, <clears throat> then turn your work upside down. I'll put one more in here. Maybe I'll squeeze one more on the other end too. Okay. So now you can stop at this point if you want, but I think our pumpkin really needs a good cheesy smile. So what you're going to do, rather than starting here in the middle of the corner of the mouth and going all the way to the other corner of the mouth, you've already given yourself division lines. So do just a couple little division lines at a time. Maybe it's only two teeth worth or maybe it's three teeth worth, depending upon how you um, made your vertical poles, okay? So you can see here, I started on one corner of the mouth and I just did a couple. Now. Think about it the same way. The next one is just going to be a couple. And then another one might just be a couple. So marry your lines up where you start and stop, making sure that you always meet that one that you are going towards. But you're going to give yourself a top and a bottom set of teeth just by doing a couple little lines at a time. That's another great pro tip. That's another tip that you can use when you're painting checkerboards. Just do a couple at a time, especially if you're new to painting. Maybe you're not that familiar or comfortable with working with a liner brush. So take your time and do just a little bit at a time. Okay, now I'm going to rinse that brush out. Let's real quickly get our large flat brush out. I have a three quarter inch flat on the supply list. Let's work in this modeled background and that is going to be very quick and then we'll finish up with the details. So with a three quarter inch flat brush I'm going to load my brush just by scooping into this puddle of white paint. I see that there's a little bit of purple in there. I don't care if a little purple gets into my project. That's going to be fine. So I've got white on both sides of my three quarter inch flat. And now I'm going to tip into the aqua and I'm going to get just a little bit of aqua on one corner of that flat brush. Then I'm going to do what we call a slip slap technique. So I'm going to slip and slap and slip and slap and overlap and slip and slap. And I'm just going to add this mottled aqua and white background all over the outside edge of my canvas here. You can restroke, you can add a little bit more white, you can add a little bit more aqua. This is your background. It can be as modeled as you like. I do like it when it's brush strokey. I don't want it terribly, terribly smooth. You do want the color to be 
um, very textured. Let me show you here up close. Can you see it's kind of textured? It's not real solid aqua. It's not solid white. It's very mottled in, it, in its effect. Yeah, you could see it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Caitlin, I haven't asked you for a while. Do we have any questions? Um, not any questions. There's okay. Just, there's been a lot of compliments. They love it. They think it's cute. It's adorable. Oh. Yes, the white gives it such depth. <laughs> I really hope, y'all, that you guys are enjoying this. That is my wish for tonight. I hope that you are painting along or plan to paint along with me and that you will take pictures and share it. I think this vintage style is just so fun. It's a great touch of whimsy and something that you don't really see in everyday um, Halloween decorations. It's not a traditional pumpkin or a scarecrow or something like that. I think it just lends itself so beautifully and to be that one-of-a-kind piece of Halloween art. And I did get a question on the YouTube channel. Um, the pattern is actually in the description. Oh, perfect. Yes. Yeah, I and forgot about that. The supply list and everything is in there. Okay, so you can either go there or go to Plaid Online. I think it's there as well. Yeah. So, great. Both areas you can find the pattern. If you're not painting with us tonight and you've been inspired to uh, paint giggles and grins, know too that this is, like we've said a couple times already, if you missed it, this is being recorded, this lesson is, so you'll be able to paint at your own pace, at your own time, at your own kitchen table, in your jammies, if you so feel like you need to. <laughs> And we still have plenty of time between now and Halloween season. So you can paint giggles and grins. One for yourself, one for your friends, one for your neighbors. Everyone's going to want a vintage style giggles and grins, right? <laughs> <laughs> and using this large brush, this three quarter inch flat brush, this base coating this outside edge is so quick and so easy and I will tell you a lot of times people ask why do we not do the background first and then put our pattern on and then paint and if you're painting this later at your own pace and if that's your method or style of painting I want you to feel comfortable by all means you can do that the reason why we don't typically do that here during our paint nights is we have a short amount of time to be together and we don't want to watch paint dry. We want, don't want to take the time with a hair dryer to dry it all. So a lot of times we paint the subject matter first and then work our backgrounds in around that. Okay, I think I pretty much have my background on. It's very mottled. It's very slip slappy. One thing I want to tell you, we are going to paint the white whiskers coming out. So if by chance you want to add a little bit more of your aqua to the sides of the face, you don't have to, but if you wanted to, you could pick up more aqua on your brush and just kind of dab that, not that you want to have a circle of aqua by all means, use that slip slap technique and just maybe work in a little bit of a darker area or a darker color, still kind of keeping the strokes modeled and then your white whiskers will show up much, much easier for you that way. I'm going to add a little bit closer to this head here. And I, because I did it on one side, I'm going to go ahead and do it on the other side. Just so that my whiskers will show up. Okay. Alright. Now, let's go back to putting the rest of the details here on our painting. And then we'll do the very quick little... Uh, leaf overall leaf pattern on the outside edge. So I'm going to take a moment clean that three-quarter inch flat brush And then I'm going to blot it dry and set that down. Let's go back to our liner brush My liner brush is going to be filled first with our black and that again is my licorice and or my pure black and I'm going to pull another little puddle of it out here with some water, thinning it down. Again, we want that paint kind of juicy or fluid. And I'm going to touch my paper towel just to wipe off that excess and then reload. 
All right, so now my liner brush is filled with that thin fluid black paint. And what we're going to start with is up at the top of our painting and we'll work our way down. So at the top of the painting here, I'm gonna bring up my hero so you can see basically the shape of our hat, which is kind of like a triangle, has all been outlined with our black. So with my liner brush filled with that thin consistency black paint, and remember your outside edges here are probably still wet. If you want that to be dried before you put your elbow or your hands or your wrist into the paint, do so. Otherwise, just use a very, very gingerly touch so that you don't get your fingers in this background color, but you're going to sh uh, outline the shape of our little triangle here at the top of the hat. And right now, oops, right now at this point, we've painted over that pom-pom. So if you decide you want to add a pom-pom to yours uh, afterwards, we can do that here in just a moment. You may choose not to put a pom-pom on the party hat, but I kind of think it, Matt, it needs it. This is a partying vintage kitty cat. <laughs> I'm going to outline that first rim that was the aqua rim that we added our lavender, just kind of trailing around from the ears, coming upwards and over. There we go. So now our hat has been outlined. The uh, collar here needs to be outlined, so I'm going to make sure my paint is flowing well for me. And I'm going to just outline, let me bring it up so you can see, outline from the, where the head meets the scalloped collar or the ruffled collar. Just each of these little scallops are all outlined with black. This is what I sometimes call the jewelry of our painting. This is all the extra fun details. That, and to me, it's the details that often make it and make one little scallop at a time. What a difference some of this black outlining, or if you were doing white outlining, what a difference all of this makes to the look and feel of your finished piece. Really adds the finishing touches. <clears throat> all right. Now let's see, with our black, we're gonna, we've are gonna. we already got our eyes and our nose and our teeth and the smile line all done on our little pumpkin here. But I want you to look at, when I bring this up, I want you to look at the sections. This liner brush and our thinned fluid black paint is gonna add a very wiggly, jiggly line down each of the sections as well as the outside body shape. To me, that just adds a little bit more charm, a little bit more whimsy, even a little bit more vintage. This wiggly jiggly line is done very, very simply. And if you, by chance, hate working with a liner brush and you're a little nervous, this is even better because you'll find that you will do just a little bit of a wiggly jiggly line. So it's just a matter of pulling it. Some of it will fall outside of the pumpkin onto your background and that's perfect. It does not have to be a continuous line. You can stop and start, just do little bits of wiggly jigglies, and it just adds so much fun and character to our design. So every single vertical pull here or vertical section between the pumpkin is all done with this little wiggly jiggly line. It's just the tiny, tiny tip of your liner brush that's making contact to your pumpkin surface. And I'm going to start at the top here and then stop at an eye. And then finish up from the bottom of the eye and stop at the mouth. And then same thing here. And I'll, on the other side, we're going to come from the mouth all across the bottom. He's looking fun, isn't he, y'all? <laughs> I can't wait to see yours. Are you all having fun? I think they are. I sure hope so. Hey, Chris, I just muted you. Okay. We have 9% on the, on the iPad. <gasps> so just letting you know. Okay. If I like give you a signal, we'll have to like wrap it up. And like if you get to like one leaf, 
Okay. Just be like, just do this all over. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm unmuting you. Okay. All right. So now my little pumpkin fella has all been outlined with black. So Grins basically is done. Now let's go back to Giggles because Giggle needs his uh, whiskers. And then we'll real quickly do a little uh, leaf section here on the outside. And that's all there is to our little project. And if you want to add a pom-pom uh, pom at the top, we can do that too. So I cleaned the black out of my liner brush. I now want to work with some white and thin down the white. So I'm going to bring some white over here closer to me. This again is our wicker white. I'm thinning down with some water using my liner brush. We are going to paint whiskers. My kitty cat has three whiskers on each side. And the whiskers are going to start here on the face or on the body of the cat and they're going to pull out. We're not going to stroke whiskers inwards. We're just going to pull out. And this is why it's very, very important to make sure that your brush is loaded with the paint that's the right consistency. You want to be able to do one long smooth, and I know that's white against white. You didn't get to see that, but one long smooth stroke. Now, if it helps you, here's a pro tip. If you're doing three whiskers like I have here, start with your middle whisker and do that and then add a whisker above it and a whisker below it. And so I'm going to do that for me and I'm going to remember my background is pretty much dry now, but I'm, some of this black down here might still be wet. So let's be careful not to get into that. And I am going to start here and I'm just going to put a little bit of pressure on the canvas and I'm just going to pull out in an arcing manner. It's not a straight stick, not a straight soldier. I'm going to pull out this way and then one underneath it pulling out that way. So I now have three whiskers on my right side. Now let's add three whiskers to my left side. So I'm going to turn my work upside down. Again, I'm just going to start with that middle whisker and so it's going to arc going down and it's going to be a little bit wider here in the center or to the beginning of the whisker. Pull it out and then curve it down. Same thing with the bottom. We're going to pull it out and curve it down and then give yourself a top whisker too. So now my kitty cat has his whiskers. If you want to do a quick little pom-pom on the top, you can pick and choose whatever color you want. I kind of thought to bring the oranges back up to the top of the painting. So I started out first with my liner brush and I pulled, let me turn it this way, I pulled vertically straight sticks almost all the way around. This is my Pueblo that I started with. And you can see I just started here at the tip of the hat and pulled strokes out. Then I'm going to wipe that brush of the Pueblo. I'm going to pick up our pure orange. I didn't clean my brush between. And I'm going to do the same thing again, layering on top some pure orange. Your pom-pom can pull out as wide as mine. It could be smaller than mine. Just pull out some of your pure orange, kind of creating a little bit more. Wipe that brush. Pick up some of your yellow. My yellow was medium yellow tonight, or the daffodil yellow. While this is all still wet, you're just layering wet strokes on top of wet strokes. And I'm pulling out a few more colors to create our pom-pom. And that's all there is to our pom-pom. If you wanted to, you can even add one more layer and add a few little strokes of some white. That will kind of blend well. Let's move on to our leaves real quickly. So I'm going to just for the sake of using the same brush that I already have in my hand, I'm going to thin down some aqua. And if you want, you have the pattern. Let me just bring this back around and I can show you. You have the pattern. If you want yours to be placed exactly like I had placed mine on here, once this is all dry, use your graphite paper, put your pattern back down, and you can trace and transfer the lines and the shapes of these uh, leaves. If you want to wing it and do a little freehand of an overall pattern, basically I use the liner brush to create, I'll do this one right down here, to create like an arcing stem. So let's do that first. 
And so I'm going to start at the base of the stem and I'm going to stroke up towards our top leaf. So we're just going to do an arcing line like that. I'm going to set that down. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to go back to my number eight. <coughs> Excuse me, my number eight flat brush. I'm loading it with the same color aqua. And uh, let's see, let me do it right here. So we have our arcing line. I did that with the chisel edge of this brush, but you can use your liner brush or your chisel edge, whichever is more comfortable for you. At the very tip of this arcing stem, you're simply going to take that flat brush and you're going to push down and smush it a little bit, lift it up and come up on the chisel edge. That's all there is to this little uh, leaf and we'll do the same thing on the side, smush and lift up to a chisel edge. And then down here towards the base, you're going to smush and when I say smush, you're applying pressure and then you're going to lift up and you're back up on the chisel edge. So that's basically what you're doing here on this little pattern. So um, depending upon how big a leaf and how big a pattern you want is how much pressure you use. This I don't want a huge, huge leaf, so I'm just going to put a little bit of pressure and then I'm going to put a little bit more there. And my friends, that's all there is to this outside pattern. So let me take it one more time. I'll do another quick little one for you. If I wanted to have one coming down here, like I have on my original, I'll bring the stem down first and then I'm going to, and you can do that with the chisel edge of the flat brush like I showed you a moment ago. <clears throat> I'm going to, this is the tip, so I'm just going to do a little smush and a lift, a smush and a lift, and a smush and a lift. And you can make your leaves as fat as you want with more pressure, as thin with less pressure, there we go. So now they look a little more even. And that's all there is to our little friend here. I've got our hat done. We have our pom-poms. We have all the line work done. And I think Giggles and Grins is done. So let's take a look at both Giggles and Grins. How's our timing, Caitlin? I think we've run over, haven't we? Yeah, <laughs> it's 9.07. Oh my gosh. Okay, we have definitely run over. Well, I want to thank everybody for tuning in and having fun painting giggles and grins with us. When I don't have a clock here, I could just keep painting all night long. It would be midnight and we'd still be here adding some details and having fun. Thank you all for tuning in. Uh, if there's not any more last minute questions, Caitlin? There's not. Okay. Once again, Let's Paint with Plaid Facebook group. Join our group. You're going to have a great time there. Matter of fact, I'll be teaching at noon tomorrow, Eastern Standard Time, for another free uh, Halloween lesson. So I welcome you to join our group. Tune in on Tuesdays and Thursdays at noon, Eastern Standard Time. And But for tonight, oh, were you getting ready to say something? Yes, there is actually one last question. Okay. Um, Cindy asked if the pearl necklace was just dots. Oh, if, yeah. Sorry. If you don't I, mind just lifting it up to the overhead. Yes, I sure can. Yes, that was, Cindy. And I'm sorry. I was, I knew I was running over. And so I was afraid that I was um, running way too far over. And I guess I did. But these little, little pearl necklace, it was just simply dots here. You can use your dotting tool. Use your paintbrush. If you do your dotting tool, you, I suggest that you start in the center and then work out like we did the teeth marks. And what I did to make the dots a little bit bigger, if you start in the center, touch down and draw a little circle before you lift up. That way you're going to get a nice real round circle and you'll have a, without a chocolate kiss. You know, sometimes when people do dip, dot, dip, dot, dip, dot, you end up with too much dimension and you get what we call a chocolate kiss little mark. If you do the little circle, then you're not going to get that little mark. So let's show you the finished one again, too. So, yes, I did give, give a little uh, necklace there along the edge. So forgot about that part. Sorry. You're good. I hope everybody had a great time. Yeah, it looks like everybody did. They all love it. They think it's cute. <laughs> great, great. Well, again, I'm Chris Williams, and in the studio with me tonight was Caitlin Smith. So thank you, Caitlin, for being here with me. And I hope everyone had a great time. I can't wait to see your giggles and grins. And until next time, come on, everybody. Let's